Get it. For those of us who weren't there, man, the Vietnam War has always been forbidden territory. A searing national void whose depths and horror we can never know outside of grisly Fogarty scored movies and Mark Baker's Nam. Even playing Vietnam as kids seemed off limits, unless you did it under the auspices of Rambo. To full on reenact it would be the ultimate heresy. A slap in the face of all the vets who died or were captured in the US military's first defeat, right? But they do it, in North Carolina. And you know who does it? Other vets. And a bunch of regular reenactors. I think, uh, I think we're ready for war. Over the last 50 years, war reenactment has gone from something Elks Lodges did on the weekend as an excuse to get away from their wives, to an obsessive pastime where hardcore reenactors spend their entire free time shopping, sewing, and researching to make the experience as true to life as possible. As the intensity of the reenactments has grown, the wars reenacted have raced forward in time, from the old favorites of the Revolutionary and Civil War to World War I, World War II, and every so often Korea. Vietnam, however, is tricky. For starters, there weren't really battles. Most of the fighting was done on an ad hoc, day by day and night by night basis. To solve this problem, the reenactors we're with built a mock fire base out somewhere in the shit, picked an arbitrary year in the war, and just dedicated themselves to defending it from Viet Cong assault all night. Are you, are you still in the service? Uh, no, I retired in 2005. I was in the army. Okay. I, uh, I got restarted in reenacting. I, I missed the. Uh, Mr. Camaraderie, mm -hmm. uh, but once you get out there and you get the feel for it, it's like, oh, wow, yeah. these guys were studs. Even just a little little taste of it, yeah. Just a couple of days, and these guys were out there for 40 days, 50 days, in the snow, nothing, and you're like, wow, I, it sucked for two days. Now do it for a month. Uh, you know, war sucks. It's true. I, nobody wants to do it. No, it, except kind of you guys <laughs> for fun. <laughs> It's true. Well, cool. Thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome. Good luck. Uh, good luck on recon. Then there's the issue of finding someone to play the Vietnamese. In our case, the reenactors just grabbed a bunch of kids from the local college and surrounding towns, which is kind of how Ho Chi Minh did it when you think about it. Came home from college. Swung the house, picked up the guns, and the kids. Came home. Nice. This isn't your first reenactment, though. Been reenacting since I was about 15. Damn. Uh, how did you end up as Charlie on this uh, on this little foray? Well, to put it blank, you know, you can't play cowboys and Indians without Indians. If, you know, if you understand my meaning, right. you got to have both sides to do something like this, and we're just more willing to do both sides. So you are NVA. Yes. Right, okay. Or like, like, is there any sort of particular attraction to Vietnam? Like, does that resonate with you in a particular way? Yeah, my, um, my great uncle was a uh, first lieutenant in a cavalry division. Okay. Um, does he know you, you're doing this this no, weekend? No, he, he doesn't know I'm doing this. Don't I don't think he'd be very happy no. if he did. <laughs> so I'm supposed to be a, um, basically a civilian reporter in betting. Mm -hmm. I guess I'm kind of half dressed right now. How am I doing though so far? I mean, you're doing pretty good. Like. The reporters would be out there in the Army OD greens wearing helmets. They would have a big old press written on around their helmet. That's what I need. Okay. Yeah, you, Instead have of a, a goth band from the 80s, but... Yeah. Hey, thank you so much, man. Yeah, no um, problem. Good, uh, happy, happy hunting today. <laughs> thank you. All right, tape rolling. Good morning, um, Vietnam. We are um, outside a, uh, a fire base. The men you see milling behind me are members of the uh, 89th Infantry. I don't know if the rest of this uh, unit has gotten up and gotten dressed. Feels like they're taking a uh, collegiate Saturday approach to this war. We've seen formations of uh, BC irregular troops moving through 
that sort of area towards our, I'm thinking that's the uh, northeast. It is pouring rain, which is uh, great for the realism, but um, sucks for, I guess, the reality. Uh, perfect weather to absorb the misery that is this ongoing war. Happy New Year, 1968. Yeah, we're going Just in. skirting it. Now we're going in. Right in the middle. Okay. Should be quite a, quite a roughly silent movement with all the rain. Whenever you're ready. This guy right here. Okay. Mooch. He'll be the last guy. Give there. us about no, five yards. Right, so five then. behind Mooch. <laughs> so will be our maximum. Since there's no predetermined outcome, unlike traditional reenactments, this means America could win the battle, or maybe even the war. The first thing we learned about war reenactment is that it's fucking terrifying having guns fired, even ones loaded with blanks. The second thing we learned was a common reenactor's dilemma called the GI effect, which is basically that people playing Americans don't like to die, so sometimes they just don't. Well, the Viet Cong fired a rocket, and it came in over the top and hit the top of the bunker. Um, basically, if that was an RPG, uh, most of the movie would be pieces right now. Most everybody out here is an amateur military historian, mm -hmm. and that's the main reason we do this hobby. Uh, about half of my reenacting group are actually military veterans or active duty. The real soldiers, sailors, airmen, marines, uh, they all go through horrible hardships to protect this country. We want to make sure that when we're out here and we're doing these reenactments, that uh, we're not doing a disservice to them. The realism of the combat makes it even more psychologically intriguing that ex-combatants would submit themselves to this guaranteed flashback trigger. Is it ever hard on, like, does, does anybody ever have any problems with it, like, having come from combat, basically going into, like, simulated combat? Oh, uh, we, we have some guys once in a while that have some problems. I'd say it's about 40% of them, their first event back, they'll actually go sit in the camp for that event or have some issues. Yeah, with it'll, the, it'll take them some time to kind of act on it. Too, uh, it's okay. The Gross. horror and the terror is just shards of a veteran's uh, experience in the military. Of course. And if we can focus on, you know, the positive aspects as well as the, the hardships, um, you know, the veterans, they really appreciate that and they really like that. We've been uh, asked along, actually, by this uh, recon unit made up of special forces guys that are going back out into the woods trying to flush out the dudes who are uh, uh, lighting up the, uh, the fire base. Lighting this fucking forest up. I got the down, VC! VC, eat now! You'll come back later! VC, eat shit! <laughs> You're wiped out. They got a pizza. <laughs> they got a pizza. <laughs> Alright, let me go. Let me grab a quick talk. Just so that they understand. This is a part of the war you don't very often get to see. That's a... What? Oh, no, no, this is... Uh, Right, no, 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 we understand that. You obviously get breaks and things. We'll, we'll head back and hopefully not see you again later. <laughs> All right. As night fell, we snuck away from the American unit we were embedded with and fell in with a bunch of VC and NVA regulars who were planning a nocturnal raid on the fire base. When we were young, we'd do like little pranks, right? So we phone up a Chinese restaurant. We go, do you have one young guy? <laughs> and literally, this guy, say, he looks, I'll look in the menu. He looks in the menu, he goes, no, we don't have one young guy. And I say, well, do you have an old one then? <laughs> and hang up the phone. Right? Okay. One young guy? One young guy. <laughs> Uh, just a bunch of VC hanging out in a tobacco field, uh, teaching each other how to shoot. I mean, it's not a rice paddy, but whatever. You're in North Carolina. This is your team. Everybody with the red scarf. You're in, you're in VA. 
if you get killed, stay there. The Americans going to check you, search you, then they're going to leave you, okay? After they check you. Uh, girls, they know that y'all girls. Don't worry about it. It begins. Run, you fucking goop! Charlie's fucking everywhere. Our fire base is under attack. Cut the camera off. So we just uh, witnessed a war crime. 